Let's talk about uh, your uh, work on unconventional sources of energy, particularly here in the United States with the um, boom in shale gas. Uh, the United States is set to be to actually um, surpass Saudi Arabia in the production of oil and gas, perhaps in uh, another uh, five to ten years. Uh, this has tremendous implications for energy security, for uh, national security, particularly as it even relates to, to Russia. Um, so uh, what about this longer term strategy about uh, trying to um, accelerate the export of, of U.S. natural gas, shale gas uh, to uh, Europe? Uh, is this viable? Do you see this in the offing? It's a very viable option, and it's one that should be pursued. Let's say if the recent uh, uh, events had not occurred in uh, Crimea and Ukraine, that uh, this is a, an approach that the United States needed to be looking at and needed to be moving on. Why? Why does it matter? First of all, I think uh, those who are pursuing various uh, 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 approaches for an energy policy uh, believe strongly that we, to maintain a strong foundation, really need to have a, a kind of diversified approach. And here, actually, by our uh, uh, providing and enhancing these LNG, liquefied natural gas, um, exports to Europe, it will benefit Europe because Europe will not be as dependent as it has been in the case of Russia. But at the same time, it will also be a benefit to us economically and also in terms of just our own, um, uh, uh, if you will, geopolitical strategies. So I think it's time has certainly come. Uh, there's been a debate going on in the United States as to whether this should happen or not happen. And I think we're well past that debate. The time is now to really move forward on these exports, to diversify our energy portfolio and our energy policy strategy. And uh, as I said, significantly, it's not just benefiting the United States, mm -hmm. but it also is benefiting and can benefit countries like Europe that are very desirous of not becoming as dependent as they have been uh, in the case of Russia. And of course, it will lessen U.S. dependence on oil from, middle, from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Will that free us up in terms of our um, policies? Uh, will we be less perhaps uh, likely to um, you know, acquiesce in perhaps uh, positions by Saudi Arabia and others because we will have a freer hand. Well, you know, it's very interesting that you mention this point because I think one of the most important issues here is how do you have a balanced approach? I know that when I was uh, a year ago in Turkey, actually, I remember a Saudi businessman came up to me and he said, I'm very concerned about what's happening in the United States in the energy field. Does this mean that you will cut off ties with us? Does this mean that we will not interact at all in this uh, sphere? And a report that I was just affiliated with, uh, uh, sponsored by the Center for New American Security, looks at these geopolitical implications. And where we came out, and I, I think it's right, let's have a balanced approach. We, on one hand, don't want to be subject to the vicissitudes and, uh, and changes of all kinds of policies and circumstances abroad. But at the same time, we also want to be not disengaged. So we don't want to be held hostage, you know, uh, and literally dependent uh, uh, on uh, relationships with other countries, but we don't want to alienate. Mm -hmm. And I think that was his message. So I think it was a good message, an important one, and there needs to be balance here, that as we go forward and we enhance those exports and we provide for those LNG terminals and build those terminals, that at the same time that what we should be doing is we should be um, trying to figure out ways of still collaborating with countries in the Middle East, with countries in Europe and different parts of the world and where we have been reliant.